G'day guys, welcome back to Supercoach with DR and welcome to the round 11 stock market. Before I get into today's video, a couple of housekeeping things. Firstly, just want to give a huge, huge thank you to all of you that are watching, to all of the Supercoach community. Just reached a thousand subscribers, so extremely humbled by that and really, really appreciate all the kind words and support. So thank you, thank you so much. It really does mean a lot. Secondly, I have not uploaded my round review yet. I thought that I'd try to focus on getting the stock market video out first because I'm sure that you'd rather have that video out that helps you with your teams rather than just hearing about how I went for the week. So I will get that out. So make sure that you check that out. I'll try to get that out either tonight or that'll be tomorrow. But uh, I hope your round went well. This week, we've got some really big dilemmas. We've got some dilemmas in regards to the rookies. We've got three really nice options this week. You know, which ones do we pick? That's going to be a big question for us. We've also got some premiums that are coming down in price. You've got someone like a Zach Williams there, a Rory Laird. Five's getting cheaper. You've got a really cheap Travis Boak. There's lots of options that we can be looking at at this stage. So I think for some of us, we may be looking to get a pot into the side because our teams may be looking a little bit vanilla and we want to make a bit of a surge in the rankings there. And I think another big discussion point this week is going to be all about that man we see at the bottom of the chart, Max Gorn. Massive, massive break even this week. Question marks on whether or not he'll even get up. If he does get up, we know that he's going to drop in value. So I've got a bit of a crazy plan myself. Not sure if I'm going to follow through with it, but I think the ruck discussion this week is going to be a really, really relevant one. So we'll start with the defenders, 500k plus. Up the top there, you got your best buy, Rory Laird. I actually had traded him in last week. Unfortunately, pressed that reverse trade button. So I just had this feeling. I had messaged George the week before and said, look, I'm liking look of Laird. What do you think about him? And he recommended him, said, look, I think he'd be a really good buy. Unfortunately, he didn't follow through on that and missed out on a massive, massive score. He was under 500k. He was a great buy. I just had that feeling last week. I wish I had a followed through on it, but, uh, you know, these things happen. At 529, 300 with an average of 102, break even of 14, clearly, clearly your best buy from the bunch here. If you've got him, I think there's five other buy now. So you've got Ridley, Maynard, Ryan, Haynes, and Lloyd. I think if you're going for absolute quality and you probably need to pay up, you go for Haynes or Lloyd for that absolute quality, maybe even a Ridley, or else I think Maynard and Ryan are also both good options as well. Ryan's been hitting some form lately, which is nice. Daniel at the moment, look, you could still bring him in, but his break even's 137. Probably could get him next week cheaper. Mills has gone up again. And look at Sicily. He's been just, yeah, up and down with that break even, hasn't he? We find him up the top, back down the bottom, back up the top of the chart. Uh, so, yeah, that that roller coaster that, that James Sicily is didn't, you know, score a 40 or 50 for us. But remember, he's coming off that massive, massive score, which sent his price skyrocketing originally. So, uh, yeah, I suppose basically any one of the guys that you see there on the page, I think is a good player and a good super coach option. So I would be focusing on value. Um, and that's certainly led for me at the moment. And then probably Ridley after that. But Haynes and Lloyd are absolute quality and you can pretty much lock them in for a 110 plus score most weeks. And they've both already had the buy as well. And the same as Ridley, he's had his buy as well. Or won't have a buy, sorry, um, to say it more technically. So rare, yeah, recommend yeah, the top six and then the other three, maybe keep on your watch list. In your mid-price defenders, you got the best buy there, Zach Williams. So probably competing with Rory Laird for the best value premium of the week. And I do refer to Williams as a premium, even though his current price point puts him in the mid-price defender defender range, sorry. I like him, but as we all know, it's that yeah, durability concern, isn't it? We know that he misses a lot of games, Zach Williams, but we also know the type of potential that he does have. He was one of the most expensive starting picks in our back lines at the start of the year. I think a big reason for that also was the fact that he did run through the midfield towards that later half of the season when the Giants' midfield was just decimated. So I think that did help to really boost up his average and his score towards the end of last year. But I still think he's a really good buy. I'm really, really looking closely at him. And for my last defensive spot, 
yeah, it, it would be out of Williams and Laird, I'd say. Uh, as a pod, Luke McDonald, yeah, can you trust him to score like he has been and keep that up? I'm not too sure, but I played against someone that had him in the team in one of my cash leagues uh, last week or the week before and absolutely killed me there. Unfortunately, another thing that's killing me is the fact that I've got to trade out Tommy Duday. So he's got a break even of 57. He was on track for a really, really nice 100. He did hit, uh, I think it was about 102, 101, 102 in his last game, but he did his hammy and was off for basically the whole of the last quarter. So that could have been an awesome score. He would have been going right up in value again, but you've got to sell him. He's out for the season. Noble, you could keep on to him, but again, he could be someone that you could put on the chopping block. Yeah, fantastic that he's made his way up to 345. I didn't think that was going to happen at one stage. I've got Chera there just as a real pot option. Watched him pretty closely on the weekend and just loved him. I think he's going to be a terrific player and he's showing some really good signs at the moment, Chera. So uh, if you're looking for someone completely different, someone that's had his buy, an up-and-comer, Chera could be your man. Adam Saad, keep the binoculars on him. Break even of 76, average of 98. And Brody Smith, I've just got the roller coaster on this bloke. He just goes up and down like nothing else, doesn't he? Uh, Jack Crisp, I also read as a pick there along with Jaden Short. Bailey, oh uh, yeah, wish I'd have got on him a few weeks ago when I was thinking about that. Witherden, you see his break even's gone up to 102 now. Uh, he's made a little bit of cash though, which is handy. Tommy Stewart's gone back up. And Shannon Hearn, he's had his buy, but yeah, big break even, 124. I don't think you can trust this pick, to be honest. On to the defenders, less than 300k. Your best buy by the length of the Flemington straight is Lockie Scholl up the top there. Negative break-even of 29. He has gone up in price last week already, gone up to 155, 400. But if you're comparing the other options there, I think he's definitely your best buy. Toe Watson, well, unfortunately, he was looking like a terrific pick. And some that we, well, lots of us did trade in, but his job security just isn't there. So yeah, I don't think you can get him in. Rusko, not a huge fan of. I don't think he'll make much money. Not sure about his job security, but they do have lots of injuries there at Collingwood. Williamson, uh, Day McPherson, they've been rock solid as rookies there, playing really well. Rivers, not sure about his job security, but great to see him come up and uh, play another game, make us some more cash. If he can, you know, keep his spot for the remainder of the season, which is huge question marks on that then you've got the option to swing him either back into your back line or from the back line into your midfield. So he's a handy little pick to have, actually. Stars, you've got to chop him, I think. Now, look, you could keep him. You're not making much money. I was going to keep him, but luckily I traded him off a couple of weeks ago now. Do what you want to do with him. And Derek the Egg, he's got to go, Decker. Uh, break even of 97. I never really rated this pick. I don't know how much money he's actually made. Was he low 200s? I can't remember, to be quite honest. I was never really interested in him, but uh, he's going to lose cash, so get rid of him when you can. On to the midfielders, 500k and over. I think your best buy there, might be a little bit controversial, is Taylor Adams. So he's got a break-even of 57. Collingwood's midfield is a little bit decimated at the moment. Average of 112. Still a pod, Taylor Adams. I'm assuming a lot of that's due to the fact that you know, he's, he's not the most durable player that's out there. But I think if you look at his, you know, last couple of years, he hasn't been too bad. I'm thinking of taking a punt on Taylor Adams. Look, there's a few guys that I'm thinking of taking a punt on at the moment and probably going a little bit crazy. But uh, I think, yeah, he's he's probably your best buy there. You could say that someone like a Clary is with a break-even of only 72. But the big difference, obviously, is you're paying 150k more for Clary. So I'd prefer to go in Adams because I could use that 150k in so many other ways on other lines at the moment. Wines, I think he's a bit of a trap. I would not be going there. Bont, I like him a lot better than Wines. Uh, you can see they're basically identical there with the break-evens, averages, only 10k separating them in price. I'd much rather go Bont over Ollie Wines. Menegola, talk about a pod. Um, yeah, Huey was seriously considering this guy at the start of the year, which was a huge move. And uh, yeah, Spione didn't go through all that, mate. But he's been in ripping form lately. He's been getting a lot of midfield time. But, you know, he's... It, it got, it, how many was it? I think it was, was it four or five intercept marks? I could be making that up. But, geez, he's damaging all around the ground at the moment, Menegola. And uh, yeah, getting a lot of time uh, in super coach friendly positions at the moment. 
player, as I said, really good buy there. Zeret, he's been in good form, 73 break even. You can buy him now. Titch, you can buy now, along with Cogs. I actually, yeah, don't don't mind Cogs as a pick because he's already had his buy. Along with Titch, he was disappointing last week. Titch, I got him in personally myself. Um, just wasn't damaging. Didn't do enough with the ball, unfortunately. So uh, definitely not a failed pick. Hopefully he can jump back on the horse and get another 120 to 130 plus. That would be lovely. Uh, Jared Lyons, he's been terrific, this bloke. Um, yeah, massive pod, hugely underrated. And uh, if you check out Spill's video earlier on the year, he actually had one uh, had uh, Jared Lyons, sorry, as a sneaky pod pick to start with. So, uh, yeah, great job there, Spills. Nat Fife, uh, definite buy now, I think. Break-even's gone down to 105 now. That's been in the 200s for a couple of weeks. So he's come back down to 575. We know that he was around the mid-600 marks, pushing towards 700 in the form that he was in. It's a risk because we know his injury history. We all know that. But uh, at the price that you're paying, even if he spends time on the forward line, I still think he can go 120 plus most weeks. He's just a gun, that Fife. So the risk is that he could do another hammy, be out for the rest of the season. But on the positive side, he's got a massive ceiling. We know what the man can do. So we only need to, need him to play for six weeks. So if he can do that, I think he'll be a terrific, terrific boy. Talk about underrated um, and just under the radar. I've given this guy no credit whatsoever. I wouldn't even say not enough credit because I've given him nothing, Trent Dumont. But you can't really ignore him anymore. 577,000, 107, 107. So right on the average and the break even there. There's no way in the world I could bring this bloke in, but I thought I've just got to chuck his name out there just to give him a little bit of credit because I think he deserves it. Simpkin, everyone's been talking about this year, but this is a bloke that looks to have really, really stepped up lately. Taranto, really love this guy as well. He was in the McCluggage McGrath draft, went number two, Clugger number three. Uh, really rate this guy as a player. He should be pretty fresh as well. You know, he's been injured, I know, during the season, but I think he's built it up built up, sorry, his fitness now. He's just coming up the bye, being able to rest his body after a couple of games back. So I think he could be a really, really sneaky option because he should play every game for the remainder of the season. And Brownlow Neal, just give him the medal now, put Charlie around his neck. I was chatting with Spills to the late hours of last night, actually, about this bloke. And apart from that 87 and 130, I think he's then gone to 135. Everything else has been like a 140 plus. So we've never seen a season like it. I think he can keep it going, to be quite honest as well. Tagging isn't really in fashion for most teams at the moment. So, Brownlow Neal, come on down and accept the medal, I think, mate. Jack Viney, well, panic trade for me last week. I ended up trading him out for Luke Shuey. So, still not sure how I feel about that. I sort of regret it, but I really, really wanted those extra points on field. Given the fact I didn't have too many GWS or Sydney players I really try to, wanted to try to make some ground in the overall rankings last week, which I was able to do, uh, which was handy as well. But, uh, yeah, not sure how I feel about that. We certainly wouldn't look to get him in. Jack McRae, look at that. He's got a green break-even, and the break-even's 125. So that says a fair bit about his average and how he's been going lately. Pretty much unattainable if you don't have him now. I'm lucky I started with McRae and Neil, because if you don't have these blokes, then they'll be absolutely killing you at the moment. I won't go through really each of these guys individually. I think just keep them all on the watch list because I rate them all as picks. Luke Parker's had his buy, something to keep in mind, I suppose. Same as Jelly, Tim Kelly. But here's another one, Tim Kelly. We've seen him up and down a lot this year, haven't we? At the top of the chart with a low break even. Now he finds himself with a massive 167. Probably the guy, and this is, yeah, I, I don't know, but Jack Steele's probably one you could even still have a look at because he's had a phenomenal season so far. I know that break even's 151. I wouldn't be going there myself, and I'm certainly looking for value more like an Adams sort of a pick, but ask yourself the question, would you rather have Taylor Adams or Jack Steele on your side? And I think 99% of us would probably say Jack Steele. So you're paying the extra 70K, similar to a situation like a, a Lloyd and the Haynes in your back line compared to a Zach Williams type, I suppose. You've got to pay up for some of these blokes, and if you need to upgrade this week, this is the week that you need to get your final one or two midfield spots sorted, then even if it's a high break even, you should be pretty confident that Steele is going to average well for the rest of the season, I think. Uh, Mitch Duncan, most of us have got, and Dunkley next year. Uh, yeah, pretty sure I'll be starting with this bloke. Love him as a pick. 
On to the mid-price midfielders now. Sammy May's up the top there with a break-even of seven. He's made some really good coin. Very happy for him, as I've said in previous videos. What a pod, Dom Sheedy's. This could be a real option here. So a break-even of only 15, average of 97. Not the best average, but I think he's the informed midfielder at West Coast at the moment. Was just smashing it in the weekend, getting involved in absolutely everything. Really high disposal, uh, disposal rate. Sorry as well, Sheed. So I really like him as a pick at that price because he's a pod. So um, look, you'd much rather get a fife in, pay an extra 100 grand for a fife. But if you've got these types of players um, and you're looking to go completely different, he's at his buy. Maybe look at a Dom Sheed um, and spend maybe big in your uh, back line maybe for a Lloyd, as I said, just as an example. Crips, I can't say this <laughs> with any great certainty, but I think he's a buy it now. Out of these options, if you're looking to buy it now, with a break-even of 59 with an average of 101, we know what he can do, but will he do it? Yeah, I'm not too sure. So certainly not confident there on, on Paddy Cripps. Binoculars on a few other blokes here. won't go through them. Travi Boak, he's a really interesting one because I went completely cold on him last week after watching him the week before. And then if I'd have watched him play like he did in his last match the week before, he'd be in my side at the moment. So yeah, he's up and down. The trouble with him is that he'll give you sort of some of those 60 scores as well as those 120 to 130. So you have to be prepared to cop one to two low scores, I think, for the rest of the season with him. And uh, that could queue in Supercoach finals. Who knows? But he will give you a couple of nice ones. We're pretty sure on that. But uh, yeah, I don't know where I completely sit on Trav Boak. At that value, I think he can bring him in though. And Marlon Pickett there, get rid of him, sell him. Time to go for Marlon now. He's made us some really, really nice cash. What's that? Over 200k now. Time to get rid of him. So you either downgrade him to one of the blokes I'll talk about in a sec or upgrade him to one of the options we've talked about also. Uh, for the midfielders, under 300k now. These are the two blokes that I was referring to that you could downgrade him to. You've got Wix and Bytel. So I have had a lot of people I know ask me already about these two blokes. Who's a better option? They're really hard to split, aren't they? So look at the price, look at the average and the break even. There's the same price and four points difference between the average and four with the break even. So very, very tough to split. I've got with Bytel as the best buy simply because I rate him as a better player. I know that uh, he was a gun junior, had some injury troubles in his draft year, so slid down the rankings a little bit there, but St Kilda rate him. He plays in the inside. He's a midfielder. I'm assuming that Wicks may play more forward, so I'd prefer the role that Bytel has. Gresham going out of the side, I think, is a real positive for him also, so that's something to keep in mind. But again, the difference is that St Kilda are really looking to make it deep into the finals. They'll be playing their best team every week. Whereas I think Sydney will probably look to focus on playing some more of the youth. Uh, I think that their finals aspirations aren't really realistic anymore. Look, they'll be pushing as a team, and if it's still math mathematically possible, then that's what they'll be pushing for, as, as all teams should. But yeah, it, it's a real tough one because there's pros for both of them. I think they're both good picks. If you can get both of them in and you need to double downgrade, go for it. But if you have to choose one, I would just go with Bytel, but that's just a personal opinion and based on a bit of gut and a bit of previous knowledge on Bytel. I do not know a heap about Wicks, to be quite honest, apart from he's a young bloke. I think from the academy, I might be wrong on that, and he's got a break even of negative 28 and average of 80. That's really how much I know about this bloke. All the other guys there, just, just don't look at, don't worry about it. You get one of these two blokes in, definitely. With Benel as well, I probably should have had the axe on him because I chopped him last week. I don't think he comes into the side anytime soon. So, look, I, I may be wrong in saying that. I'm not too sure. But, um, yeah, I'd probably be chopping him if you could. Sammy Simpson, he's a really interesting one, isn't he? Because he's probably one of the rookies that we need to get rid of due to his high price. But he's got a break even of 21. So that's, yeah, purely a personal choice. For me, I'm tossing... Yeah, between yes and no trading him this week. I'm, to be completely honest, have pretty much gone straight on to making this video. So I need to uh, make a few decisions myself. On to the rucks now. This is going to be a massive talking point this week. So I'm going to spend a little bit more time than I usually do on the rucks. Usually my advice is look for one of the big Gs. Grundy, Goldstein and Gorn. 
But as we all know, we've got some massive, massive question marks on Maxi Gorn at the moment. So look, there's arguments for and against trading him, even if he plays or even if he doesn't play. Look at that break even. So 241. Let's just say if he gets that average right on his average of 141, he goes down about 45k. So all of a sudden we're looking at 680 for him. That break even is going to stay really, really big or really, really high, I should say, sorry, the week after that and most likely the week after. So he's going to be leaking cash. Now, my main concern with him, even if he does play, we know that he's not going to be 100% if he gets up this week. We know that for a fact. He's coming in sore, shoulder issues, a knee issue. He's just not looking great at the moment, Maxi. And I'm spewing because I paid up the big bucks for him a few weeks ago. I was wrapped. I said, I finally got him in. Why didn't I start with him? And I got a great captain score of 154, I think it was. And then, yeah, just fell off the cliff, did old Maxi. And look, it's not his fault. I know he's carrying some niggles, which is unfortunate. But look, yeah, I, I wouldn't blame you. I wouldn't blame you. And I'm still seriously contemplating it. And I probably will. I'm, I'm really not too sure. I, I really need to think carefully about it. But if he doesn't play, he's gone for me. So that's, I've made up my mind about that. If he does, I'm still not sure. Now, the reason why I'm contemplating it, even if he does play, is because I'm thinking if I can downgrade to another ruck, that may even give me the money to be able to upgrade somewhere else. So I could be getting almost two for the price of one. So call me crazy, and I can't believe them saying this out loud. If I had have told you that I'd be saying this, you know, earlier on in the year or really any time this year, I would have said, put me in a straight jacket. Lock me away, throw away the key. But I'm seriously thinking of trading Max Gorn for one of Peter Laddams or the Big O. All right, so hear me out, hear me out. And look, it's probably crazy, but you need to think about these things. They've both got forward ruck status as well, which may be handy for those with a Combin or a Cameron somewhere, either in their ruck line or their forward line. So he's gone 80, 106, 45. That was against Gorn though. Then he's gone 123 against English, and then 138 against Soldo. The 106 was against either Marshall or Ryder or both of them. The 80 was against Pitney. The next two weeks, he's coming up against Reese Stanley and Segler slash Big Boy. Or it might be Fort. I'm assuming that it's going to be Stanley. We know about the merry-go-rounds in the rucks that they have down there at Geelong. But if I'm putting him up against those two particular players... Uh, I'll say Stanley and Segler, then I really like the look of that. I like the look of Laddams. He's already got an average of 99. We've seen what he's done the last couple of weeks, and he's got a break even of negative nine. So let's just say, worst case scenario, that he gives you around, you know, an 85 and a 90 for the next couple of weeks, he still goes up a fair bit of cash, you know, short term. You can then swing him. There's a lot of options that you can do with Laddams after these next two weeks if it doesn't work out. For any reason if max does play of course he'll be going down in money i, I know yeah it, it's it's a really really risky move but there are lots of benefits to this move i think there are lots of yeah there is certainly a downside and a lot of risk attached to it as well but i don't mind this move of getting laddams in similar to the big o so my main issue with the big o is that he's still yet to play Goldie, Grundy, and Wits. He does come up against Sydney and Carlton, so that'll be Sinclair and Shitney, so I like that. Um, look, he, he performed well against Tim English last week, or Tinglish. Uh, I forget, someone mentioned that in the comments to call him Tinglish. Um, I'll give you a shout-out next video. Sorry, I, for, I forgot who that was last time to make it uh, easier for me. Tinglish, we'll refer to him to us now. But, um, yeah, Big O played really well against him, and... Uh, yeah, hasn't gone, and he's gone, uh, I think it was a 93, a nice 128, another 100 plus when he's been the solo ruckman. So you've got to think with that average that he's got there of 82, many of those games Steph Martin was in for, and he also played, I think it was three with Archie Smith as well. He hasn't missed a game, but he's played the majority of them either with Smith or with Steph Martin. So now that he's got the solo gig, the big O, he's really flourishing. I love him as a player. He's one of those guys you can rely on to take a few contested marks. He's a great option down the line there. He's strong. When he rests forward, he can be damaging down there and really dangerous down there with his huge reach, contested marks. Pretty good kick for goal as well. Not many of the Brisbane Lions players are at the moment, but he's not too bad. The big O, pretty reliable there. 
So they're two really sneaky options, pod options, that I like. They're cheap, they've got that status, uh, the DPP I'm obviously referring to there, and they've got a break even of negative nine and 20 respectively. So they're my really sneaky options for this week. Shout out to George. He got in Nick Nat last week, which was, yeah, just a king move. Well done, George. Good stuff there, mate. That was fantastic. He's definitely an option. 516K with a break even of only 36. So you could be saying to me, mate, you're crazy. When you've got Nick Nat with a break even of 36, Oscars is 20, you've got to go Nick Nat. But for me, it's that price difference that you've also got to take into account as well. So uh, Nick Nat to Laddams, you're saving 100K there. And what's that, about 80 with the big O. So 80 grand can go a long way. Um, and again, many people are going to be keeping Gorn, as I might be as well. So these are, yeah, just some moves I'm just throwing out there because we've got to really think outside the box. Goldstein, I suppose you could still go to. You're going to lose a bit of money. I don't think he'll reach that 145. He hasn't been hitting those really big scores as of late. Um, but certainly an option. If you haven't got Grundy, I'd recommend to get him. Only concern is there was rumours he was going to be rested. Was it last week? He obviously wasn't and played pretty well. Um, nothing like the Grundy that we've seen in the previous probably year or two lately. Um, been a little bit down, but uh, certainly something that you look at. Wits is a real pod, but I wouldn't be going there myself. Segler, massive track with Pitney. Obviously, as you know, I probably didn't even need to, to say that. And the other one I've got there as well is Sean Darcy. So he had a massive score last round. He's had the buy, he's 362. So you're saving money on a Laddams or a Big O type even there. This is a huge risk as well, because look at that average of 69. I think one of those may have been injury affected. I'm not too sure. I've never taken much notice of Darcy to be completely honest, but with a break even of 16, if you, as I said, with, with lots of these options, if you're looking to go right outside the box and go completely different, then he is an option. Couldn't do it myself. But then again, listen to me, I'm thinking of getting Laddams or Big O in for someone like Max Gorn. It's it's absolutely crazy. But with the amount of trades that I've got, amount of upgrades I've got left, do they out for the season killed me because I just wasn't expecting that. I may need to look to make a move uh, and it may involve Max Gorn because he's guaranteed to go down in money. But he could come out and score a 180. Who knows? That's what Max Gorn can do, and that's why we select him in our sides. But uh, yeah, tough discussion with the Rucks this week. I'll let you know what I'm doing. Geez, will, we, will I have to make a decision tonight? I'm not too sure. I'll try to race through this so I can make a few decisions of my own. On to the forwards, 500k. I won't spend a heap of time on these blokes, but I think your best buy there is Lockie Whitfield with an average of 100 now, break even of 58. He's been in ripping form the last month, Lockie Whitfield, and he's absolutely killed me not having him in my side. Track, oh, what what a gun. I'm actually um, currently, as we, we speak, in the process of making a video about Patraka, and I'm making a new series called the Leapfrog Series. Um, so keep keep out for those. They'll be out probably within the next one to two weeks, I think. And I'll just go through a bit of his history and why I think he's really changed his game around and turned his game around from being, I suppose, an average player with a heap of potential to an absolute elite gun of the competition. But uh, yeah, he's he's still a good buy, even at 618, I think. I don't see him slowing down anytime soon. So definitely select him with confidence. And Andy Brayshaw, I think he's a buy now as well. Break even of 90. 574, it feels almost wrong paying that for Brayshaw. I understand that because uh, for someone like me who started him, I've made almost 200K on him. He's been a terrific selection. But look, the data speaks for itself. The numbers are speaking for themselves. If you actually watch this guy play, I think you'll be really impressed with him if you look at him closely because I obviously do each week owning him. So the top three there, certainly select with great confidence. Walters, bit injury prone, I'd probably stay away. Dusty. Break even has gone right back up again. On to the mid price forwards now. Jack Rewalt, he's hit a little bit of form. Break even of 12 with an average of 56. If you're looking to make a yeah, really different sort of a move, you could go him, but I wouldn't recommend it. Robbie Gray, he'll be a roller coaster. Low break even this week, though. Again, if you're looking to go different, talk about a pod. I love this guy. Zach Butters is a terrific player. Exciting, um, you know, damaging score involvements, quick. I really, really rate this guy as a player, and I think he's a future gun of the competition, Zach Butters. 
if you're looking for, as I said, I keep saying it because I, I need to throw some different names out there because the reason why I'm, I'm including players like Butters is because lots of the teams now are starting to look the same. You know, you've got those Whitfields, Petrarca types, you know, as your F1, F2s, and yeah, lots of the teams looking pretty much the same. And we're all in different positions trade-wise, you know, with money in the bank. So for some of us, we may need to look at some of these left field options, some of these cheap options that are looking to rise in price and are actually finding a bit of form. So I do rate Zach Butters as a player, as a super co uh, coach option. Sorry, can't speak at the moment. He's a really sneaky option. He's hitting form. I couldn't do it myself. It, it's a ballsy pick, but it is an option that I'm just putting out there. Simpkin, I think he's your best buy. Again, I don't say that with great confidence, but he's under 400k now. So if you're looking for someone like a Butters compared to a Simpkin, it's probably safer just going someone like a Simpkin. And you're actually saving about 60k there. So you'd get Simpkin in. He's your best buy out of the lot there. Uh, Shy Bolton, really exciting player as well. And Benny Keys has been a nice pod for those that have selected him. Uh, I probably wouldn't be selecting him at this stage. A lot better options, I think. For example, someone like a Simpkin. Darcy Parrish there with a break-even of 79. Liked his game on the weekend. He's got an average of 82, so nothing to write home about, but he could be someone that could finish your forward lines with. Uh, binoculars there on Wingard. He's had his buy. I'm, I've never been a fan of Wingard, so I couldn't recommend him personally, but can understand if you want to go there. King, I think that you've got to get rid of now. His break-even's now 86, so downgrade or upgrade if you can. We've got a really nice downgrade option, I think, that we'll be talking about in a minute. Binoculars on Baz, he's been really disappointing since I've got him in. Butler, roller coaster. I said this, you know, when, when I started making the Supercoach stock market videos, that he will be up and down just with his roll down Butler. And he was hitting form, and I got to the point where I think I may have even had him as a bite now for one week. I had to give in just due to the numbers and the form that he was in. But yeah, I, I sort of did predict that he would have some of those really low scores, and we've seen that. Greenwood, I think he could even be a, an okay buy now. If you get him under 500k and he needs to complete your forward line, even as a, sneak, a sneaky F8 with that uh, DPP status, he could be someone that you could look to get in even this week. But next week, he'll be a really good buy as well. The forwards, under 300k. There's only probably one bloke out of this whole list that you actually look to bring in this week, and I think that's Woodcock. So... A break-even of negative 41 with that average of 62. A little bit worried about his job security, possibly with Brad Ebert coming back in or when he comes back in. But look, really passed the eye test for me. Look, really exciting. He was quick. He was involved in the game and just really, really liked what I saw for him. Uh, from him. Sorry. So, yeah, I'm a, I'm a fan of, of, of Woodcock after watching him from that one game, mind you. But I can't comment any further on his job security. So, like him as a player... Whether he keeps his spot, that's probably a question for Port Adelaide supporters. And I'll try to do my best to get onto a couple of um, blokes that I know that support Port as well. But uh, yeah, I, I think that if you're looking to get someone in, if he's named, certainly go for it. None of these other blokes, I would. Guys on the chopping block, Buderick, Waitman, Marnie. Taylor's definitely got to go. I haven't even put the binoculars on him. That's just a, a no-brainer. Get rid of him. Downgrade or upgrade. Um, either go down to Woodcock or you'll have to upgrade him. Um, but yeah, those four blokes down the bottom. Waitman, maybe you could keep on to because um, he's a talented player. Does he come back on the side? I'm not too sure. But he's made you basically no cash. So yeah, there's arguments to keep on to him. And Buderick, or Butterick, I keep on switching between the two pronunciations. <laughs> Apologies for that. Uh, maybe keep on to him because I think it would be handy to have a DPP swing if you're keeping on to a Brad Close, for example. So that'll do for now, guys. I hope that that helped in some small way. Remember that I will have my round review video coming out either late tonight or tomorrow. But good luck with all of your trade decisions this week. There's some crucial ones that could be really season-defining. I still don't have any idea where I'm going with mine. I think I better get to that now. So take it easy, guys. All the best. And thanks again for all the support. Cheers. Bye.